Isaiah 45, we're going to read verse number 5. The Bible says, I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, we ought to be in hell. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. For that day that I repented and called on you, you changed my life. You saved my soul, and I bless your holy name. Lord, even though you saved me, that does not exempt me from troubles and problems. But Lord, you've helped me through the problems, and I live a blessed and a cherished life because of your marvelous grace. Now, Father, I pray if there's any in our midst today, some may come every week, I don't know. And they may be faithful to attend, but they don't know you. Lord, I pray before this service ends, they'll give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. Lord, there may be some here today that's facing troubles and facing problems, facing things much bigger than them. God, I'm glad even though it may be bigger than them, it's not bigger than you. Lord, you said in the word of God that nothing is impossible with thee. God, uh, you are greater than anything we will face, and I pray for those that are struggling, you'd help them today. I pray for that one that may not have hope, that, Lord, they'd realize there is hope in Jesus. I pray for that one that may be not feeling well in body, that you'd touch their body and strengthen them. God, I pray for all the prayer requests today. I do pray for... Uh, uh, Brother Mike, and I pray for Brother Luther, and I pray, Father, for Miss Charlene. I pray for Miss Janet, Lord. I pray for uh, uh, those that are facing surgeries, and Bella, and Miss Nancy's son-in-law, and uh, little Samantha, and others, Brother Bob, and others that are sick. And Lord, I pray you'd touch them and help them. Now, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about this place. I know the devil like nothing more than to fight, and distract, and disrupt. But Lord, I know you're greater than the devil pray you'd bind the strong man and I plead the blood of the lamb over this place use this unworthy vessel glorify your name thank you for brother Sammy and Miss Susan how we love them I pray you touch that dear lady and help her and father we'll give you the praise for everything that you do for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things amen amen I'm interested in this verse and in reading this verse I want you to notice what a statement this verse makes can I say, first of all, notice it's an emphatic statement. The Bible says, I am the Lord. You may wonder, uh, is there a God? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, who is God? He said, I am the Lord. Uh, 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 he said, you don't have to worry about praying to Buddha. You don't have to worry about what Confucius says. Uh, you don't have to worry about what Muhammad stood for. Uh, you don't have to pray to Mary. Uh, uh, the Lord Jehovah God said, I am the Lord. What an emphatic statement. Uh, it leaves no room for error. Uh, it leaves no room for your mind to wander anywhere else. Uh, you need help today. Uh, I can point you to the one. He is the Lord. Uh, his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, and he is well able to help you today. Uh, it is an emphatic statement. Uh, notice that it is an exempting statement. Uh, he said, I am the Lord, and there is none else. Uh, there's no one else like him. Uh, there's no one else compares to him. Uh, there is no one else that is worthy to pray to, uh, to depend on, uh, to put your faith in. Uh, there is none else. Uh, he said his throne's in the sides of the north. Uh, that means everything else is beneath him. Uh, there is no one like him. Uh, uh, friend, no matter what you're facing, uh, he is the answer. Uh, he is an emphatic statement. Uh, it's an exempting statement. Uh, but I want you to notice also it, it, it's an exalting statement. Uh, he said, I am the Lord, uh, and there is none else. Uh, there is no God uh, beside me. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people trust in a lot of things. Uh, the psalmist said some trust in chariots, uh, some trust in horses. Uh, uh, friend, there are people who trust in their job. Uh, there are people, God help you, that trust in the government. Uh, there are people that trust in the people. Uh, but friend, there's no one beside God. Uh, he's the only one that is worthy to trust in uh, and worthy to praise. Uh, hey, what a blessing to know him. Uh, 
Do you know him today? Now notice, if you will, the engaging statement. He said this. He said, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Now, friend, listen to me. Long before you ever was, he knew you'd be here today. See, he's an omnipotent God. That means he has all power. He's an omniscient God. That means he knows everything. And he's an omnipresent God. That means he's everywhere all the time. And friend, before he formed you in the womb, he knew you. When he hung on Calvary some 2,000 years ago, he looked ahead in time, uh, and he saw you, and he saw your needs. Uh, uh, the Bible says, with his stripes we are healed. Uh, he was beaten uh, and b uh, battered beyond recognition, and he hung on Calvary because he knew what you and I would need, uh, and he knew that you'd be here today. He said, I girded thee, even though thou hast not known me. Brother Sammy... When you was that soccer star, when you was wrapped up in Catholicism, he'd already girded you. He already had his eyes on you. He already loved you. He saw your sin. He saw your wickedness. He said, I love that old boy. He said, I'll die for that old boy. Now listen, he loves you. He's girded you. He's even going to allow you to be here today and hear his truth. But it's your choice whether or not you'll embrace him. He's already looked at all your faults, all your failures, all your sin, all your wickedness, all your shortcomings, all your unworthiness, and he still says, I love you and I'll take you. Hmm? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Brother Brian, when you was that sorry, no good motorcycle driver, doping it up, drinking it up, thinking you was living high in the hog, he saw your wickedness, he says, I love that old boy. Yeah. And he made a way for you could hear about him. And when you say, Lord, he said, I'll take you. Yeah. He said, if any come to me, I know why it's cast him out. He done girded you. He said, I got my sights on that boy. I love him. Yeah. And he's got his sights on you, and he's had his sight on you. huh? Knowing what you'd go through, he still loved you. Hmm? Hmm? Loves us. Charlie knew that you'd be here a year ago needed to hear about hell so you'd get saved. What a Savior that he loved us. Hmm? What an engaging statement. Uh, one, song, one songwriter said, Who am I that the king would bleed and die for? What an engaging statement that the God who is holy, the God who took nothing and made everything, uh, uh, the God who spoke uh, and the stars were made uh, and the planets were made, uh, uh, the one who made the sun and told it to shine, uh, uh, the one who uh, uh, knows when to form a storm cloud uh, so we can have water, so we can have vegetation, so we can eat, uh, the one who feeds the grasshoppers and the birds uh, and the alligators uh, and bless God, even the snakes, uh, uh, the one who takes care care of the cow so I can have a steak, hallelujah. Hey, he, he, the God of all glory uh, loves you and I. Well, that's an engaging statement. I got to thinking about that, Brother James, where he said, I am the Lord. There is none else. There is no other God beside me. I got to thinking about him. And I want to preach for a few minutes on this thought. He's more than enough. I don't need another God. I don't need someone beside Him. I just need Him. I found He's more than enough. He's all that I need. He's more than enough. Hey, no matter how big or how dark the problem, He's more than enough. I found He is true and faithful. I found He is well able. He's more than enough for me. And friend, He'll be more than enough for you. Can I say He's more than enough when one's defiled by sin? It don't matter what you're caught up in. Uh, don't matter how far you've drifted off in sin. Uh, don't matter uh, 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 what you're guilty of. Uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. Uh, hey, uh, I've been saved some 45 years. Uh, I'm glad His grace is sufficient uh, and His blood forgives sin. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, who was guilty of murder, uh, who was guilty of treason, uh, who was guilty of all kinds of things, 
things against God. Uh, he said this, that he was the chief of sinners. Uh, hey, uh, he said, if God can save me, uh, he can save anybody. Uh, hey, he's more than enough when you're defiled by sin. Uh, God's grace is able to save you. Uh, hey, he, God lets you be here today, let you know God saves sinners. Uh, he's more than enough to save sinners. Matter of fact, Jesus left heaven, went to a womb of a virgin, uh, uh, was born into this world to go to the cross for one reason, to seek and to save that which was lost. Paul was the chief of sinners. You're the chief of saints, chief. Isn't that a blessing? Huh? Huh? But see, God feels that way about all his youngins. You're the, you're the chief too, huh? Isn't that a blessing? You're not only junior, you're chief. Isn't that a blessing? Huh? Oh, he's more than enough if one's defiled by sin. You see, when you're caught up in sin, you think there is no hope. The greatest thing you can ever realize is that you're a sinner. And when you're caught up in sin, I've got news, he's more than enough. See, you've got to get lost before you can get saved. When you realize you're a sinner, you're in the right spot. Now all you need to do is look to the one who can save you. He's more than enough for one that's defiled by sin. Can I say this? He's more than enough when dry bones is all that's left. I read over there in Ezekiel where God called him to a valley. And in the valley, Brother Josh, is a valley full of dry bones. Huh? Huh? Listen, uh, what a blessing that preacher had it. Huh? Here, go preach a bunch of dry bones. Huh? Uh, listen, I preached a lot of dry Baptists, but I hadn't preached the dry bones. Huh? Hey, uh, I'm a Christian. He looks out and there's some dry bones. That's all he's got. Uh, and God said, uh, preach the word. Uh, and he preached unto the dry bones. Uh, and God got to stirring. Uh, them bones got to shaking. Uh, and God called for wind uh, uh, from the four quarters of the earth. And the wind got to blowing. Uh, and all of a sudden, sinews came upon them. Uh, and muscles came upon them. Uh, and veins came upon them. Uh, and flesh came upon them. Uh, them bones rose up to be a mighty army. Uh, hey, uh, uh, when dry bones is all you got, uh, he's more than enough. Uh, hey, the word of God gets preached, uh, and the wind of the Holy Ghost gets to stirring, uh, and dry bones get to shaking in conviction, uh, and God begins to do work. Uh, and what used to be worthless uh, is now a mighty army under God. Uh, thank God that he's more than enough. Now some of you just sitting here seeing this crowd full of folks thinking, wow, what a blessing. You wasn't here 20 years ago when he's in the old building uh, and we just had some dry bones. That's all we had, Clint. Uh, just had a handful. Uh, but God uh, honors preaching uh, and the wind got to moving. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, 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 Brother Randy and Miss Kathy were blown in. Uh, Miss Mary, you got blown in. Miss Marcy, you got blown in. Uh, uh, Miss Melissa, you got blown in. You saw revivals. Uh, God started blowing them in. Uh, God started changing folks' lives. Uh, and here we sit today. Uh, hey, when dry bones is all you got left, uh, God's more than enough. Hallelujah. He's more than enough. Uh, preaching still works. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. But it's through preaching that God edifies His people. Hey, He's more than enough. Can I say he's more than enough when the degrees of the furnace are heated seven times hotter than they've ever been heated before? Again, we read the Bible and we just think of them as stories. There were three Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, who refused to uh, uh, obey the king's command. Uh, they made a stand. Hallelujah. Thank God for some that will make a stand uh, in a day and age where everybody wants to cower down. Hey, praise the Lord. There's still some said, no, I believe in God. Uh, I'm not going that way. Uh, hey, the king said, we're going to throw you in the furnace. They said, uh, uh, go ahead and throw. said, who is that God that will save you? Uh, hey, they said this, Brother Ray. They said, our God. God is able to deliver us. Uh, but even if he doesn't deliver us, he'll deliver us out of your hand, you old right and no good king. Uh, hey, the king got mad. Uh, he heated the furnace seven times hotter than it ever been. Uh, when they opened the door, the guards that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego down there, uh, they were consumed in the heat and died. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego all bind up into uh, ropes were thrown in the furnace. Uh, listen, uh, they got in the furnace. Uh, first thing, they were loosed uh, from the ropes. Uh, but they was there uh, and not a hair was singed uh, they didn't burn in the heat uh, 
what they found in the midst of their furnace uh, was a God that was more than enough. Uh, and Nebuchadnezzar looked and said, did we throw three in? Uh, they said, yes. Uh, he said, but I see four walking around uh, and the fourth one uh, is like the Son of God. Uh, I said, he's more than enough. Uh, hey, I can see him down there. Uh, oh, Shadrach going, hallelujah, praise the Lamb. Uh, oh, Meshach's going, glory to God. Uh, Hey, old Abednego says, Lord, uh, have you got a sweater? It's a little cool here in the furnace. Uh, I'm telling you, he's more than enough. When they came out of the furnace, they didn't even smell like smoke. Uh, why? Because God's more than enough. Say, so, well, I don't believe that. Whether well, you don't believe in the God, I know. Uh, he's more than enough. Can I say this? He's more than enough when you're deserted by everybody else. Uh, can I say a Christian will never be lonely oh you may feel lonely it's your fault if you do the apostle Paul said this 2 Timothy 4 16 at my first answer no man stood with me but all men forsook me ever feel like that uh, Paul said everybody walked out on me you know, we think of the great apostle Paul, the great preacher, the one that God used to take the gospel to the Gentiles, planted churches all over the world, wrote 13 books of the New Testament. We're thinking, what a man. The apostle Paul said, yeah, I was such a great preacher and such a great man of God, everybody left me. Hmm. Can I say right about that time, most Christians would fold up the towel and go home. Hmm. But he didn't stop there. In verse 17, he said, notwithstanding... The Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Uh, when you feel deserted, he's more than enough. He said, everybody forsook me. He said, but when they were walking out, the Lord was walking in. He said, the Lord stood with me and he strengthened me. Hey, can I tell you something? There's been some wee hours in the morning of my life when I wondered if anybody cared. Yeah, I wondered if anybody would be there. <laughs> oh, but can I say, there was a peace that passes all understanding come over me. Uh, and the Lord said, I'm here, son. Uh, it'll be all right. Uh, and you know what? It was all right. Because uh, he's more than enough God. Uh, even when you feel deserted and that no one cares. Jesus said, cast all your cares on him, for he careth for you. Huh? He said, ye that are uh, uh, heavy laden, uh, uh, he said, uh, take uh, his burden, take up his yoke, uh, come unto me uh, and, uh, and draw unto him. He'll change your life, friend. Our problem is we get feeling sorry for ourselves. We start stucking on our thumbs. All we got to do is come to the Lord. He's right there. He'll help us. I got to thinking about this. He's more than enough when dark clouds overshadow you. It's been said by many of preachers over the years. You're either in a storm, you're coming out of a storm, or you're fixing to head into a storm. Job said that man's days are few and full of trouble. Can I say that uh, uh, the Lord said, they that, uh, shall live God they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Amen. You're going to go through some tough times. I want to tell you something. Lost people go through tough times too. Amen. The difference is we know the Lord. And can I say when dark shadows and dark clouds overshadow you? Did you ever feel like I, kids Google this? It used to be part of the Fred Flintstone cartoons. There's a little boy named Schlepprock. Everywhere he went, there was a dark cloud over him. <laughs> Everything he touched fell apart. Well, I've had some Schlepprock days, huh? Yeah. Some days you'd be just better off just go back to bed, huh? But can I say when them dark shadows are real? in your life he's more than enough when you face heartache when your heart's aching and you feel nobody cares he's more than enough when you face hardship when you're facing financial problems or you're facing relationship problems or you're facing job problems or you're, you're facing your car don't work problems I mean just hardships and you're thinking, what's the use? He's more than enough. Can I say this when you're facing health problems? Hmm. He's more than enough. We're coming up on one year of me getting to celebrate the wonderful Valentine's Day present I got last year. Miss Annette, if you don't know her, she's a nurse. She's my darling wife. 
She had the privilege on Valentine's Day not get me a wonderful card that says, I love you, dear husband, greatest man in the world. She's never got me one of them. <laughs> 31 years, I ain't never got that one. <laughs> she had the wonderful privilege of telling me I had cancer. Now listen, I can go into all the highlights. I can go into the fact I only missed two, two weeks out of the pulpit, only missed one Sunday. I go to the, the, the fact that, you know, God was good and God blessed. Four weeks out of surgery for graduation, we take Christian to the island, going down to rest and recuperate and heal. And preacher said, we're going to set up a tent. I said, I can't preach every day, preacher. I, I'm facing I'm going to the island, preach five times on the island. Sure. You know, I, I, I can get all the highlights that I preached more meetings last year than all the other years in my ministry. I can go into all kinds of highlights. But the reality is, when you hear that word cancer, your life changes. I had to go through things medically and physically that you could offer me money, and I'd say no. But when it's health problems, and it's either you do this or you die, you do that. And you go through things. And I know some of you think I got a red cape and I got a big yellow S on my chest because I faced surgery and four days later I'm up teaching. And I know you think all that stuff. I want to tell you. When you wake up in an ICU with a feeding tube and you're wondering, is God able? I'm telling you, He's more than enough. Been three years, Brother Jack, since you got diagnosed with cancer. Is He more than enough? You're still here, aren't you? Cancer free, aren't you? He's more than enough. Wasn't pleasant to go through it, but you didn't go through it alone. What did you? He's more than Miss Mary. He's more than enough. You had cancer, huh? Aren't you glad you're not wearing that wig? And aren't you glad you're sitting here smiling, cancer-free? Is he not more than enough? Miss Brandy, is he more than enough? Huh? Had cancer, what was it, two years ago? Huh? Didn't even have to face any radiation. Isn't he more than enough? He knows. Uh, Miss Crystal, uh, 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 isn't he more than enough? Uh, your hair's back. Uh, are you sitting there cancer-free? Uh, what a testimony. Uh, have chemo on Wednesday. She'd be in church on Wednesday night. Uh, hey, I want to tell you, uh, when you're facing the darkest shadows of life, uh, you'll find God is more than enough. Others have faced dire things. Some of you have buried children. Some of you have lost your jobs. Some of you have faced uh, 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 all kinds of financial difficulties, all kinds of stressful difficulties. You've buried loved ones, uh, but you have found through it all that he's more than enough. Can I say this? When the devil camps on your doorstep, you'll find God's more than enough. Romans 8, 31 says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 1 John 4, 4, Ye are of God, little children, you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right, amen. I want to tell you, sometimes you feel like you're in the devil's bullseye, and sometimes you feel like the devil's sitting in your lap. Well, well. But I found all you got to do is run to Jesus, because the yeah. devil don't like Jesus. When you're running to Jesus, the devil's running from you. Because the Lord's more than enough. Let me say this lastly, I'll be done. I find he's more than enough when death comes calling. You see, Christians die different than lost people. Lost people die, their last breath will be the most pleasurable breath they will ever have again. They die, and the Bible says that the rich man died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. That same rich man called for just a drop of water to cool his tongue from the torment. I know people say, I'm going to die and go to hell and party with my friends. There is no party going on in hell. The Bible says that hell is a place where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, where the worm dieth not. It's a place of eternal flame and eternal separation from God. It's a place that was created to inflict punishment on the devil and his angels. And can I say, when men reject God, the only other place they can spend eternity is that place that was created to inflict punishment on supernatural beings. How much more will it inflict punishment on the soul of man? 
It's a place where people will worship God forever because they know he's justified in allowing them to go there because they've rejected him. You realize if you reject the Lord and die and go to hell, you'll remember in hell every time you pass by a church. You'll remember in hell every time you heard a gospel message. You'll remember every word of the message. You'll remember every time you saw a Bible, every time you heard a Bible verse, every time you turned on the radio and heard preaching, every time you turned on TV and saw a preacher, saw an advertisement for a church. You'll remember and remember and remember and realize how many times you, that verse came true where the Lord girded thee, where the Lord tried to save you, and you didn't have time for God. See, Jesus died for your sins. If you die without Jesus, you'll have to pay for your own sins for all of eternity in hell. That's right. But a Christian, a Christian don't die. Amen. The Bible says, O grave, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Amen. The Apostle Paul says to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. You see, when a Christian dies, he just goes to sleep. But Brian, I hope you went to sleep last night. I think you still got a little sleep in your eyes this morning. You put your head on your pillow, you went to sleep. That's all a Christian does. We go to sleep, wake up in glory. Uh, there is no sting of death. There is no pain in death. And our last breath in this world is the most contaminated breath we'll ever take. Because when we go to glory, we're going to a perfect place where there'll be no more pain, no more sickness, no more suffering, no more death, no more sorrow. We'll be with the Lord forevermore. And oh, what that's going to be. And you know what we're going to tell him? We're going to tell him he was more than enough. And we're going to praise him for allowing us to spend eternity in his abode and in his presence. Friend, I don't know what you're going through. And I wish I had a magic wand to make it all better, but I got something better than a magic wand. I have Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And friend, he's more than enough. If you're here today and you don't know him, in a moment we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. You can leave out of here a new creature in Christ. You can leave out of here and a lot of what I said today will come reality in your life be the greatest day of your life. Friend, if you're here today and you're saved and you're troubled, you don't have to leave here troubled. You can leave here with faith and assurance and strength and peace and joy by turning to the one who you should have already turned to Amen. and realize he's more than enough. You can leave out of here in better shape than you came in. Friend, he's more than enough. Amen. But he's only more than enough. If you utilize him. Brother John, you got that shop over there, you work on cars. How good of a mechanic would you be if you had every tool in the world, and you got the lift, you got everything, but you never used any of it. You just sat there and looked at them, and you looked at the car, and you looked at them. And you, looked, you wouldn't be a very good mechanic. Well, what good will it do us to get cleaned up, dressed up, get out of bed, come all the way over here to church, and hear what we need, and not utilize what God has provided to change our lives Amen. say what's the tool him Amen. how do I get it you got to look to him and ask him friend he'll change your life hey, he's more than enough I told you earlier I've been saved 45 years can I say there have been many times I've disappointed him but he's never disappointed me and he's always been exceedingly, abundantly above what I can ask or think. He just doesn't do bare minimum requirements. He always does more than enough. Because that's how good God he is. Is he your God? He wants to be. He's just asking you to put your faith in him. Will you come to him today? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Lord, we do not have the vocabulary to truly express how great a God you are. But I sure do thank you for being my God. Oh, well, my life has been changed since I met the Master. Now, Lord, I fear in my heart there may be some here today that don't know you. They don't even know what life's about. Lord, you said you came to give life and life more abundantly. God, I pray. Oh, that measure of faith you've given every man, I pray they'd realize you've girded them, you've allowed them to come, you love them. 
God, I pray they'd come to Jesus today. God, I pray for those that are saved, struggling, facing hardship, you'd help them. <coughs> oh God, we need you. We need thee every hour. God, break our hearts to realize you're more than enough. Begin a revival here today that will not end. Get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.